Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Vision's Sunday Celebration. My name is Patricia Coughlin, and I would normally be at the front door uh, greeting you and welcoming you. I so miss seeing you all in person, but uh, soon, very soon, I'm sure. This morning, we're starting our celebration with our celebration singers.
morning. Welcome to Vision Sunday Celebration. I'm so glad you joined us. And like we do every day and every week, we ground everything in prayer. So let's go to prayer together. We know and accept that there is one life. It is God's life. It is whole and perfect and complete. And it is the life that is flowing through us right now. It is beating our hearts and it is breathing our breath digesting our food. It is the life force. It is the life energy of every living thing. We know and accept that there is only one, the eternal, the beloved that is behind the diversity of all life. We know of that one life as spirit and we give great thanks for it. We come together this morning to remember for ourselves and for each other that there is only one. It is God. It is whole, perfect, and complete. It is our life right here and right now. And so it is. So good morning. Welcome to you. I'm so glad that you are here. We uh, have a wonderful Sunday celebration lined up for you. And um, what did I want to say? I wanted to welcome you in and tell you happy or hmm, not really happy, but just to observe that it is Memorial Day. I've got my little red poppy on. Um, <clears throat> you know, that was a tradition started years and years ago. Uh, remembrance poppies, they were called. And, and, you know, it came from that poem in Flanders Fields, which I'm not going to read for you because <laughs> It's always hard to get through. We'll put it up on the website. It was written by uh, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, who was a doctor in World War I, the Great War, they called it. And um, he had seen so much damage and death. And uh, he wrote that while serving on the front lines. And the, um, the American Legion now uses the poppy as the official U.S. national emblem of remembrance. And they, they voted to do that when the members convened in Cleveland in September of 1920. So I know you probably don't see uh, the American Legion out right now because nobody's out because of COVID. But normally on Memorial Day or the weekend of Memorial Day, you'll see... Um, you'll see the veterans out, uh, or the American Legion actually auxiliary out, selling poppies and raising money. And what I wanted to let you know is that there was a, another poem also. You want to look this one up on the web and read it also. It was, We Shall Keep the Faith, because in Flanders Field, there was a, in the poem, there was a line about keeping the faith down throughout the generations. And this woman, Moina Michael, wrote the response poem called We Shall Keep the Faith, and she wrote that in 1918 as a response to In Flanders Fields, and both of the poems are um, very emotional and well worth the read, so look them up on the web and, um, and do that as, a, as a, and a, a wonderful observance for the Memorial Day weekend. It'd be a wonderful thing to do, better than barbecuing. And if you do barbecue, barbecue in your own backyard. Stay far away from people. Wear your mask. I know they're saying everything is opening up now, but you know, let's just take it slow. We'll take it a little bit at a time. I know that our doors are still closed, but our consciousness is open, and that's how I welcome you in. So, what else do I want to tell you? I want to tell you that we are a place where we transform lives through practical spirituality. That's what Ernest Holmes said his whole entire ministry. That's what we do here, and we welcome people in. Uh, go online. There are practitioners. There are names and phone numbers. You can call a practitioner if you need prayer support. There uh, is an online prayer request form. There's a phone number you can call for prayer support. Um, we are here to serve you however you would like to be served, except in person. We're not doing that right now. But please make yourself, um, uh, you know, a call. Call a practitioner or write in on our website your prayer request. And you know that our entire group of practitioners will pray all week on it. If you would like a return call, you can put that in the prayer request as well. And a practitioner will call you. However you would like to be served, we are here to serve you in prayer. And welcome to anyone tuning in for the first time. We have a lovely welcome 
just for you. We say it together every week for ourselves, just to remind ourselves, and we're going to say it for guests. If this is your first time tuning in, you're welcome here. So let's say our welcome together. Are you ready? Are you with me? Let's do this. Whoever you are and wherever you are, you are welcome here. You are safe and you are loved. And so now I'm going to turn it over to our uh, celebration singers who are going to uh, join in with that centering song for all of us to center to get ready for prayer. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Reverend Sam Flynn. I'm a staff minister here at Vision, and now is our time for meditation. So we're going to do that right now, and we get a chance to relax, to center, and to just practice being in the present moment. So we get to do that first with a couple of quotes that I'll offer you in just a few minutes, and then we'll have a bowl ring, and we'll have a quiet time, and we'll finish with an affirmative prayer. So first we have some words from Rumi, who writes... Your heart knows the way, run in that direction. And from Ernest Holmes, our founder, we realize that our heart is a living center through which the love of God flows to, to bless eternally.
And so the memorial candle is burning today for Memorial Day weekend in honor of those who have served us in the armed forces. And we give thanks for them, for each and every one, for their service, for their love. And we give thanks, knowing that in, indeed life is eternal and our gratitude enfolds them and their families. And we just give thanks that there is only one life and it is God's life. I know that I am one with that life now. I am one with the fullness of blessing, the fullness of light. That union of all souls comes together in all moments, in this moment. And I am in the awareness now that it is the gift of life that calls forward that experience of love right here and right now, that I know that there is plenty, there is bounteous, there is bounty, there is grace, there is the fullness of life right here and right now showing itself as abundance of grace, of wisdom, the givingness of good in all that is. And so I know this morning as I stand here in this place with this word and this prayer, that there is only good, there is only God, and it enfolds this planet now with the fullness of life. And so I know for each one within the sound of my voice, for each one within the sound of this country and this planet, there is healing, there is hope, there is wholeness, there is goodness. I know that from this place spoken in full faith, I know that the law is already responding to the call to greatness, to the soul's call for the experience of love and peace and fullness and unity as we come together knowing the heart of each other, heart open wide, that we might see and know and feel the love that is the truth of all of us. Right now in this moment, all that follow, all that have come before, for there is only eternity, the eternity of light, the eternity of God. And so I just give thanks for this day, this time that we come together now, this word that is spoken, for I know as I release it into the law, it is already done, the blessing is already given, the bounty of life is already fulfilled. I just give thanks for it. I release this word now, I know it is so, and I let it be, and so it is. This is Reverend Patty and everyone at Vision. This is Peter Mayer, singer-songwriter from Minnesota. I'm so happy to be with you today. Uh, I'm here to share a couple songs with you. This one is a meditation called My Soul. One is a galaxy, a billion stars or more, and each star is a million Earths, a giant fiery sun, high up in some sky, maybe shining on someone. Inside a snowflake I am floating quietly I am infinitesimal impossible to see sitting in my tiny kitchen in my tiny home staring out my window at a universe of snow
But my soul is so much bigger than the very tiny me It reaches out into the snowstorm like a net into the sea Out to all the lovely places where my body cannot go I touch that beauty and embrace it in the bosom of my soul and so brief and fleeting is this tiny life of mine Like a single quarter note in the march of time But my soul is like the music It goes back to ancient days Back before it wore a human face Long before it bore my name my soul is so much older than the evanescent me it can describe the dawn of time like a childhood memory it is a spark that was begotten of the darkness long ago what my body has forgotten I remember in my soul So we live this life together, a giant soul and tiny me, one resembling forever, one like smoke upon the breeze, one the deep abiding ocean, one a sudden flashing wave, and counting galaxies like snowflakes, I would swear we were the same. Oh, my soul belongs to beauty, takes me up to lofty heights, teaches sacred stories to me, sanctifies my tiny life, lays a bridge across the ages, melts the boundaries of my bones, and paints a bold eternal face on this passing moment. Oh my. Wonderful song. Thank you so much, Peter. That was just lovely. I, I love that song that he sings about the soul. So today's talk is The Heart Knows. And we're in the month of May, and the theme for the month is listen to your heart. So listen to your heart because your heart knows. And I love that quote that Reverend Sam used before the meditation, which said, uh, Rumi said, your heart knows the way, run in that direction. And I think that's a lovely quote, you know, because we know the heart knows, don't we? We absolutely know we know the heart knows the way. It knows us. It knows our innermost desires. And Ernest Holmes in Know Yourself said this. He said, the insistent and universal desire for self-expression is the divine urge within us. Even God itself tapping at the walls of our heart, urging us on to fuller life. Right? Isn't that lovely? Think about it. You know, we're always speaking from the heart really, um, there's, there's so many idioms that we use about the heart. Think of how many you can think of, right? Um, the guy's got a big heart. Um, there's a guy, there's a, there's a man after my own heart, right? Or she has a heart of stone. Well, the heart of the matter is, um, 
Hmm. Oh, I bear my heart. Oh, you bleeding heart, right? Oh, that breaks my heart. He stole my heart. How many can you think of? She's close to my heart. <gasps> Cross my heart and hope to die, right? How many times you did that when you were little? Oh, I didn't have the heart to tell him. It does my heart good. Yeah, well, you can just eat your heart out. <laughs> Think about it. There's tons of them. Oh, whew, this is not for the faint of heart. Follow your heart. It gladdens my heart. It hardens my heart. Oh, I have my heart set on. I have your best interests at heart, right? Think, think about, think of some your, yourself, right? Oh, my heart goes out to, oh, his heart is all in the right place. My heart's desire, my heart skipped a beat. Um, oh, I come to you with a heavy heart. From the bottom of my heart, in my heart of hearts, I want, oh, don't lose heart. We have affairs of the heart. <gasps> Oh, that melts my heart. That nearly gave me a heart attack. My heart's just not in it. My heart leapt. My heart sank out of the goodness of my heart. Did I say that one again? I don't remember if I even said it again. Oh, I'm just pouring my heart out here. <laughs> but you got to put your whole heart into it. Oh, I'm sick at heart. It strikes fear into my heart. Take heart. Don't take it to heart. <laughs> We have tons of them, right? I can do this to my heart's content. <laughs> she wears her heart on her sleeve. He's just young at heart. And the ever popular that warms the cockles of my heart. And I don't even know where my cockles of my heart are. But apparently they get warm, okay? <laughs> Look, apparently our hearts know it all. Our hearts are just a bunch of know-it-alls. That's all there is to it. There is a lot going on in there. And that is a large group of idioms for one bodily organ, isn't it? <laughs> it absolutely is. So it's clear that we, we have a love affair with the heart. Huh? I, see what I did there? <laughs> anyway, we have to believe that the heart has its own intelligence, right? I mean, we refer to it so much. Oh my gosh. You know, that th there, there is a wisdom to be gained by allowing the heart to guide the head, you know? Or perhaps there is a wisdom of the heart that knows, um, there is some wisdom that the heart knows that maybe the head's not privy to. Well, you have to think about that. You know, sort of like a gut instinct, Right? But that's another organ, and that's another talk entirely, so we're not even going to go there today. Let's just stick with the heart. We are vibrational energy, right? That's really what we are. We are actually the energy of potential. So it's no surprise to anyone that we are forever sending and receiving. We are sending and receiving. We are absolutely energy right? Even our matter is energy. Sending and receiving information all the time that attracts or repels conditions into our life. Much of that sending and receiving may go on below the level of our awareness. And I would say maybe much of it goes on below the level of our awareness. Our intuition, though, is always sending us signals, and we hardly ever listen because <laughs> we're so busy with the noisiness of everyday life. That noisy mind that keeps chattering up the airways with our to-do lists and our fear thoughts and our intention setting and our regrets of the past and our hopes for the future and all of the rest of the stuff that's going on in our mind, blah, 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 blah. Our intuition can't compete with the noise level in our heads. So we just can't hear it. But it is forever sending us signals. It is forever, you know? It, just because we can't hear it doesn't mean it isn't always sending us signals, you know? You know when you have those conversations with someone and said, you know, I had a funny feeling about whatever, whatever, right? That's your intuition, you know? You know, something about that just didn't feel right. That's your intuition. Or the hair on the back of my neck stood up. 
That's intuition, right? Or, or oh, you know, I, I just had a hunch. That's intuition. All of those things are the still small voice of intuition speaking to us. And it speaks to us on a daily basis, guiding and directing us toward our good and away from what we don't want. And when we listen, when we allow ourselves to be guided and directed by our heart, by our love, by our highest and best within us, the creative spirit within, that is where the intuition comes from, right? It comes from there. When we ignore it, well, we're on our own, <laughs> right? Our, our, our individual use of universal intelligent mind is what we rely on. You know, and I think it was, you know, and then, and then really we're on our own because <laughs> we're ignoring our intuition. And I think it was Will Rogers, might have, been, might have been Mark Twain, but I think it was Will Rogers that said, good decisions come from experience and much of experience comes from making bad decisions. <laughs> and usually that's the way it is, right? We ignore our, our intuition, we run full gallop into something and we regret it later. When we allow the intellect to be filtered through the ego and then give direction to the self, the small self, with no input from the heart, we're proceeding with only half the story. We only have half the information. And, and we can run astray just as easily by um, proceeding with all heart and no head, right? And no, and no intellectual information. Ernest Holmes at a, an asylumar gave a talk in 1956, and he said this. He said, there is an integrity beyond ours. There is an imagination beyond ours. There is a feeling deeper than ours, and yet we are akin to it. Who listens closely to his own soul shall hear a song no other person can sing. Who listens to the harmony of his own being, although he be in the desert, or on the mountaintop, alone shall compose a symphony which no human instrument had to be attuned to and can play it only in wonder and in reverence and awe on the heart strings of his own heart, his own mind, in his own soul, for he is that instrument. And that is true for us. You see, uh, intuition, intuition is perceived by our mind, but it emanates from the heart. It is the heart speaking to us, that innermost us, right? The innermost God, you know, Ernest Holmes said, right, the, the outermost God and the innermost God are one God, right? So that innermost God that is the highest self within us, that is the creative intelligence itself it, it, that, is, that is nestled within, right? Whitman said it, that seed of perfection that is nestled within us. Yeah, that's it, right? And there is a great visual um, of this whole process of, of heart and intuition and mind and action and emotion. And the, and the process was, uh, the visual was created by the ministers, uh, Marsha Sutton and Lloyd Strom. And, I, and you know, if you, uh, they created a, a, a diagram called the Coach to Everywhere. And if you took the principles of financial freedom, you will recognize this. It's called the coach to everywhere. And the diagram clearly represents the interaction between universal mind, intelligence, intuition, our personalized use of universal intelligence, imagination, emotion, thoughts of error, temptation, and guidance. And it's all there in that one visual, in that one diagram. The whole divine creative process going on through us as we make our way through life, right? We make decisions getting either closer or farther away from our goals and our desires, our dreams and our hopes. And in the drawing that they did, in that, in that illustration of the, the you know, coach to everywhere, the coach, it looks very much like Cinderella's coach, doesn't it? But the coach represents the body, the physical body, our body. The physical body we're issued at birth, 
and we use as the vehicle to get around in our own lives. And within the coach is pure spirit. He's the little dude in the, in the front seat there, and he is the one who is our innermost guide, the highest self. This is that seed of perfection that is nestled within us. And this divinity within us seeks outlet through us, communicating with us in the only manner it can, intuition, which you can see is the lightning bolt, right? That little lightning bolt from, from the innermost to the driver. Well, Ernest Holmes said this in Living the Science of Mind. He said, the real creative power of mind is deeper than the intellect. It passes into the realm of feeling and acceptance, yet it is the intellect or the self-conscious facilities, faculties, I'm sorry, faculties that must speak the word in order that the obstruction may be cleared away. We could, no be we could coin no better expression than to say that God speaks to the heart through a language of feeling a feeling which is affirmative. So Ernest Holmes spoke those words years and years before this Coach to Everywhere was created, but you can see how it clearly illustrates that. Intuition emanates from the heart. It is perceived and interpreted by our mind, our own personal use of universal intelligence. The driver of the coach, that little guy up there that's holding the reins. If our mind is not open and available to this still small voice, it heads out on its own without the benefit of inspired direction. If our mind is not open and receptive to that still small voice, it may be listening to the false voice, to the voice of error. You notice him? He's the little backseat driver. He's the little guy in the back whispering to us words of the world human race consciousness, the fears, the anxieties, the doubts of the world. And when the mind is in harmony with that lightning bolt of intuition, it can plan and carry out with cooperation of the will, the emotion, and the imagination all in balance. And you can see in that diagram that that's exactly what's happening. When the, when the driver is taking inspiration from intuition, then it's holding the reins of imagination and guiding the horse, right? Just like the driver, our mind gets direction from spirit in the form of intuition. The horse is our emotions. I love that. And it gets guidance and direction from the driver in the form of those reins of imagination. If our mind is not hooked by imagination and emotion, everything is theory and nothing moves, right? If we're not hooked to the, to the horse, the emotion, through the reins of imagination, all we are is divine intellect doing nothing getting nowhere, going nowhere. The, ca the carriage is just sitting right where it was. And, and, you know, and we've all been there, haven't we? Oh, we have great ideas, but we don't do anything about them, right? We have these great inventions, or we have a great idea for a book, or we have a great idea for a painting, but we don't do anything about it, right? The horse is not hooked up, <laughs> and that's what's happening. We're, we're not getting anywhere. It's all theory and no execution. Likewise, if the horse and the reins, imagination and emotion, are running free because they're getting no direction or no plan from individual use of mind, it's, it, it's likely to run us off into a ditch somewhere. The horse is just going off by itself, just doing whatever it wants with no direction. When it's all working in harmony and in balance, we get to live out our highest and best life. We get to live out our, our dreams, our emotions, our goals, because everything is working in harmony. When it's not, the temptations can lead us astray. And those temptations, you see them along the pathway, along the path to everywhere. Those are, again, the voice of the world. But the interesting part about that is it's coming from inside the coach. You know, that little backseat driver, the, the fears and the doubts with, uh, within us, 
they are sent out because there is only this one energy and what is reflected back to us are those pedestrians those temptations along the way that can lead us astray they're our own lowest thoughts right i can't do this or i'm not good enough or or whatever they happen to be that can lead us astray those temptations are the outpicturing of the voice of error from the back seat being reflected back to us as conditions distracting us so that intuition that lightning bolt that comes from within it emanates from the heart it is the heart of us it is that seed of perfection that nestles within it never steers us wrong it always whispers to us of this greater yet to be the greater yet to be that we are and it informs the mind right it informs our mind our use of of universal intelligence who then guides and directs the emotions through inspiration and imagination to allow us to head toward our goals our desires our dreams the integrated you that you are you know and it all starts in the heart it all starts in the heart because the heart knows because the heart knows my friend <laughs> the heart knows ernest holmes said this in cosmic love he said god is an eternal presence an everlasting principle of reality god and love are synonymous love is the cornerstone of the universe the language which is universal interpreted to and through every living soul and understood by all love will find the solution within itself to every problem will answer every question it is the lodestone of life the center of reality the heart of the universe and it ultimately wins and vanquishes any foe we must locate love and god within our own consciousness here realizing the unity of all love all life all truth and all wisdom trust the heart listen to the intuition allow intellect to guide and direct through emotion through inspiration and with faith you're heading to your greatest dreams and goals realized thank you very much here's a song called all the world is one when he's 
standing up on the moon, staring at that pearl of blue. Asking at him in the breath you take, ask the water by the river bank, ask a strand of DNA, it's written in your blood. One light running in your veins, one life for one big bang. You can try and separate it. On Tinker Creek. Ask Alan Shepard when he's standing up on the moon, staring at that pearl of blue. You can take an outbound train and try to make a getaway. You can ride out like John Wayne into the setting sun. But earthlings don't leave town, they just go round and round Till they figure out all the world is one All the world is one All the world is one Thank you, Peter. That was lovely. I just love hearing, hearing you sing and come back and see us again soon, please. That would be lovely. Now it is time for our conscious circulation. This is our opportunity to give back to those people, places, and things that inspire us, uh, give us spiritual nourishment, and a vision is that for you. If you're here participating in these um, broadcasts and uplifts and everything that Vision's doing right now. This is the, the appropriate place for your tithes. And I know there's a donation button somewhere, I think, down there. And we would absolutely be honored to accept your donation and just know that it keeps us doing what we're doing here at Vision. It's just an odd time for everybody to be all scattered throughout the lands and not being here together. But know that your contributions are really helping us and enabling us to stay open, keep the lights on, keep doing the broadcasts, keep doing what we're doing. So if you are choosing to give, if you're going to the donate button or you, or you do online tithing, we are so grateful. I, I am so grateful to you and the core council thanks you as well. And uh, at this time, what we're going to do is just bring our conscious awareness to that practice of, of um, giving joyfully by going within right now in prayer and knowing that God is abundance. It is a quality of God. And we know that it flows through us and into our experience of life. We know that there is an abundance of friends. There is an abundance of work. There is an abundance of leaves on trees and blades of grass on the ground. We know that there is an abundance of opportunities. There is an abundance of love and joy. We know and accept that the nature of spirit is abundance. There is always more than enough. And we know that we stand in the river of God's abundance. We stand open-hearted and open-handed and we accept gratefully and we give graciously and we keep ourselves in that river, in the flow of all good, in the law of giving and receiving. And we know and accept that it is all God. It is all good. And so it is.
the boat, the all-sufficient source within me. I give in conscious circulation. I step into the flow. My good and boundless demonstration. Through faith I let it grow. It is time for the Miracle Minute, and we got a Miracle Minute into info at visioncsl.com this week, and I invite you to send your Miracle Minute in so that we'll have something to say next week and the week after and the week after that. But today's Miracle Minute comes to us from Betty Brink, and she said after last week's celebration, she prayed for more ways or more avenues to do her, um, her weight management coaching, and this week she was offered a chance to participate in a certain certification program and um, in the near future and it would allow her to bill insurance for consultations and so that's a wonderful opportunity for her and she said the training was offered free of charge and that's the first miracle the second is that she found money to pay for all or most of it in the form of unexpected tax refund so that's like a double miracle. I love it. A double miracle minute. Thank you, Betty, for sending it in. Thank you for sharing it with us. And we know that prayer works, right? Because it says so right on that wall. We know that prayer changes things. And thank you for being um, so kind and to submit yours. And for everyone else, please, we know that prayer changes things. Prayer changes the conditions around us. So whatever you're praying right now, if you haven't seen a demonstration yet, know that it's on the way and then send it in to info at visioncsl.com so that we can share the good news with, with everyone who's tuning in. And now I think it is time for the last word by Johnny Kirko. Hello. I get to be nice and loud. You know, it echoes in this room when you're not here. You guys need to get back here soon, but not too soon. We'll talk about that in a second. So, uh, right after our celebration today, right now, as a matter of fact, already right now, we have the Vision Virtual Meet and Greet program. It's a, via Zoom. I sent you an email yesterday so you can see uh, the link for it and the password. Also, I know that our, our moderators on uh, Facebook are putting the link as well. Get in the link. Come and be a part of the room. What we do in there is we just say hello to everybody. We're welcoming everybody. It's kind of hospitality, but separate, you know. But we also have practitioners available, and they're going to do prayer for you. And we do them. What happens in there is we have you in a separate room. So you get to be with the practitioner by yourself. You get to do prayer. Join us. We'd love to see you and say hello. So we're continuing to do the uplifts. The uplifts are every single day at 1 o'clock Pacific time. Reverend Patty Paris is leading us in many of those. She's doing an amazing job. I love what she's bringing to us each week. And we also have some guests. Yesterday, Billy Francis did a little meditation for us. This week coming up, Reverend Jean's going to be with us. So we have all kinds of really good stuff. 1 o'clock Pacific time, you can join us on Facebook or on the website. This Thursday, Joe Rathburn's going to have his, uh, his uh, I think he calls it, is social distancing tour. So it'll be starting at 5 p.m. It's 5 o'clock till 7 o'clock, a couple hours of Joe Rathburn right here on this stage. So check that out. Have a couple of online classes starting. Cindy Britton starting. It's never too late to begin again. You can check on the website all of the information in regards to how to sign up for that. Uh, but she's starting that on June 3rd. Reverend Jean Phillips is starting her class, and it's going to be starting on uh, June 8th. It's going to be Mondays uh, evenings, and you can sign up for that as well on the website. And Reverend Jean will be going through the art of uncertainty. So we have a couple of really cool um, uh, online classes coming, and we have more coming down the pike, so we're looking forward to that. Online giving, thank you very much for your continued support of Vision. You guys have been sending in your donations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Continue to do that for us. Uh, we want to keep on bringing you guys these uh, celebrations and, uh, you know, all the good stuff that we continue to do for you. Next week, Reverend Patty Paris will be back. 
How about Reverend Patty Paris? How about Reverend Patty Paris? I want some claps. Can, do they do claps on Facebook? Um, but anyway, so she's been, she's been going like a trooper for the last two months now. I think she hasn't stopped a Sunday in every single, many, many of the uplists. This woman is amazing. She's back again next week. Her talk title is Passion and Action. And we have Ray Davis who's going to be with us. Ray Davis has sung once before with us at Vision. When we opened up this building, he came to us. So we're looking forward to having him. And I also want to mention to you, so we've talked a little bit about, and you've heard, you know, many churches are opening up all across this country. Here's what's happening. Until the state the county and the city say that it's okay, we aren't even going to have the discussion. And once that's happening, we will then make a decision to be, because we want your safety is the number one thing that we're thinking about. We love you and safety is number one. We will let you guys know when that happens. It's going to be a few, a little down the road. So we'll talk soon. Thanks guys. Okay, so now it's time for our affirmations. You have them on the screen. I have them in my hand. We're going to read them together. If you would like to stand up like you do while you, when you're here, please do that. Stand up. Stand in the power and the truth and the passion and the purpose and in the present tense. We're going to say these together. You ready? Are you with me? Okay, let's do this. My heart knows my true path and leads me forward. I allow life to be peaceful and loving. God is breathing me. God is beating my heart. We recognize that last one from our centering song. Okay, which one you wanna, do you want to do again? Number two? I heard that. I heard it was number two. Okay, let's say it again. I allow life to be peaceful and loving. And we absolutely do. So let us go within one last time here this morning and pray out. What we know is that God is all there is. That there is one life. There is one energy. And that is the energy of potential. It is the energy of creation. It is the loving, guiding energy of the beloved just making itself known in form as us. It is that, that sweet seed of perfection that is nestled within us. It is all life everywhere. And we know it is the truth of our life right here and right now. And we give it free reign. We allow it to inform us, to lead us, to guide us so that our intellect can then proceed forward. We know that God is all there is. We know that our heart knows the way. Giving great thanks, I simply let it be. And so it is. Amen.